Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create a simplified G3 spine character. So basically the simplest character that you can create in Crazy Talk Animator 3. You can see on the screen right now we have this simple looking penguin dude. Uh, if you want to add him to your scene, you can go over to the actor tab under G3 spine and you can find penguin right here along with his uh, buddies, the caterpillar and earthworm and a couple of other uh, G3 spine characters as well. So these G3 spine characters have their own customized animations. Uh, we can go over to animation right here and you can apply them by, by uh, the G3 spine folder right here. And let's try a couple of these. Let's try like the uh, catapult one, for example. You can see the penguin can catapult his head. He can uh, just die, lie on the ground. Um, there's a few more here like uh, hang his head in shame. He can uh, fling himself around. Um, you can also do a jump and a roll uh, as well, like this one right here, jump and roll. Um, all sorts of fun stuff that you can, um, you know, have your penguin do. But basically, it's just a simplified spine bone. Uh, we're going to add in the other, our default dummy template for the spine bone in just a moment here. We'll go over to Actor, Character, and Spine. And then we have this spine dummy right here. So I'm going to click and drag that onto my scene right here. You can see it's just a nice white column, whatever you want to call it, with the, with the gray border here. Let's take a look at the uh, bone structure of these two characters. If we go over here to our motion key editor, and we load that up, you can see a very, very simplified bone structure. One, two, three, four, and then a bone nub at the very end and a root at the very bottom. All right, and the same thing goes with the penguin. It's basically the same bone structure, just uh, on top of a different mesh and slightly tilted to the side. You can see that it's basically the same thing. So it's compatible with all those specialized motions, okay? So simplified characters like this, you can just use this dummy template uh, to basically import the bone structure onto your character's mesh. All right, let's talk about how to do that right now. So with this uh, spine selected, I'm gonna go into the composer mode over here in the top left. And in composer mode, you can see we have it right here. We can just go into preview and I can, you know, preview if I take the uh, end right here, I can, you know, move it around. You can see how it stretches and morphs our mesh around and everything like that. And you can take individual parts and rotate them in different directions to create sort of a, you know, curvature like this if you want. All right, so that's basically uh, what it does, okay? A very simple structure. Now, the first step to getting your own character, customized character in here is replacing the mesh. Uh, so what you want to do, replacing the sprite rather. Uh, so what you want to do is go down to bone one at the very bottom here. You can also see your hierarchy on the right hand side here in the scene manager. And what you want to do is go into sprite editor. You can also just double click that uh, sprite right there and it'll open it up. And you can see we have this image right here, the sprite of the gray border with the white interior right here. Just a very simple sprite. What you want to do here is you want to place, uh, press this button right here Click this button, replace current sprite. And it's going to replace the current one on the screen right now. So we're going to replace that. And I have this little pigeon PNG that I've uh, imported in. You know, pretty, pretty low resolution, nothing special. But you can see we can import that in very easily right there. So what's happening now is this pigeon uh, PNG file is assigned as a sprite to our first bone, bone number one right here. And you can see on the bottom left, if we go over here, you can set it as default image, and that's checked on the bottom there, so that's what we want. All right, and pretty much we're good to go from here. So what we want to do is after we close this down, we can edit our, we're going to edit sprite mode up here on the top, uh, transform sprite, and we can, you know, make resize our pigeon to something a little bit smaller. We can change the position and everything as well. I'm going to make it a slight bit smaller, and I'm going to move it over here. Now what I want to make sure that I do is I want to position the sprite Make sure that the bone, your uh, uh, base bone here, all the bones actually have to be on top of part of your character mesh, uh, part of your character image. So you can see this blue part of the bone there is the, the bone nub, the root nub here is on the heel and it's going up the uh, leg right here. Okay, so the sprite is resized and positioned properly. Now what we can do is go into bone edit mode right here, transform bone, all right? Uh, since we already have the bones we need, we don't need to go into bone edit mode over here. Uh, we can just, you know, use these ones right here. Take this second bone nub here. I'm going to hold the shift key and click and drag to uh, reposition this nub slightly or node slightly and hold shift again. We're, gonna, we're just going to basically create a curvature uh, for 
right through the middle of our mesh. Again, holding shift and clicking these nodes right here. And I'm going to place this one and one over here and the top one right here, right on the top of his head. Okay, and again, if you want to, you know, move them down a little bit, you, you can do so by holding shift and clicking on those little nodes there and moving them around. Okay, but uh, I think this curvature right here is fine and dandy. We'll kind of work with this. So if you want to preview what it's going to look like right off the bat, just go to preview. And we can take the head here and, you know, move the uh, pigeon back and forth. And you can do his little uh, pigeon dance, okay? So that's basically it right there. We're going to stop the preview now. And that's basically it. So let's go ahead and go back to our stage mode here. And what you can do now is apply all the different animations to the uh, pigeon as well. So if we go to uh, Content Manager, you know, you can uh, go into Animation, uh, again, G3 Spline, and apply those same animations. We can catapult, we can die, <laughs> we can fling him back and forth. Oh, we had him hang his head in shame first. There you go. All right, but that's basically it right there. Now, one thing to keep in mind as well is we're going to go uh, into back into Composer mode really quickly here. And if you've applied animations to your character, it'll say that if you want to edit the bones, you need to remove the object animation. All right, so basically, you need to, if you want to unlock the bone edit function, you need to remove those animations that we've applied. So keep that in mind. I'm going to right click, remove object animation, and then go back into composer mode. And we're going to take a look at the last little feature here, which is in bone edit mode, uh, the bone editor right here. And I'm going to take a look at the wireframe of my character. So you can see the wireframe is uh, fairly simplified. We have a you know fairly low density. If you want more detailed uh, curvature, you know uh, smoother curvature on your on your character, you can always increase the density of your wireframe. So if we go up here and uh, increase the density, you can see we'll have a very you know high density uh, pigeon right here, and we can also increase the alignment to a uh, you know, pretty high value. And notice that when we increase the alignment. We get a lot more geometry along the outer edge of the uh, pigeon's mesh, which which basically leads to more like smoother results when you're uh, animating your character. So let's take a look at this. If we increase the geometry slightly, we go into preview mode right here. I take the head and I just uh, you know notice that we have a nice smooth smooth curvature along the edge of our pigeon's uh, neck and everything like that. We can you know move it around like this and. Uh, you know, basically, it's it's nice and nice and uh, smooth. There's no jaggedness really along the uh, edges of the neck and everything like that. Okay, so if you don't want that, you know, say you want a bit more jaggedness, or for example, you want to save resources or something like that. Well, then you can go back into bone edit mode, show wireframe, and you can take that density, you know, all the way down, something very low. All right. Oh, we need to make sure that we're on the first bone layer, by the way, before we do that, because this is the bone layer that contains all of our geometry. If we go over here to Layer Manager, you can see that's the layer right there that contains the image. All right, so make sure you're on that layer. We'll take density down to like the lowest level, alignment down to the lowest level, and then if we preview now, I take my uh, head right there. You can see it's a little bit, especially on this end right here, you can see there's a little bit of edginess along those areas right there. Uh, you know, not much of a difference on simplified characters like this. But just keep that in mind. You know, right there, you can see the kind of uh, kind of edginess right there along the uh, along the shoulder or along the wing of the uh, of the pigeon right there. So keep that in mind as well. If you want to have you know smoother results, smoother bending results, and morphing results along the side of your character, you may want to consider increasing the density to a higher level. Uh, again, make sure you're on the right uh, right level there, right layer, and increasing the alignment as well. I recommend. You know, doing about 75% and then uh, previewing that, you can see that we have you know, a much, much smoother stretching result along the edge of our character's uh, mesh right there. All right, not too apparent in uh, lower, uh, very simplified characters like this. When you get to more complicated characters, it's definitely more apparent. But just uh, keep that in mind as well. So that's really about all there is to this tutorial, guys. That's how easy and simple it is to create a, a simplified G3 sprite, uh, spine character, rather. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Uh, make sure you check out our forums at forum.reillusion.com and our YouTube channel as well. And I'll see you in the next video.